This video is an introduction to cube counting problems. It covers the rules of cube counting PAT problems, as well as how best to analyze cube structures. Cube counting problems are the second to last section on the PAT, so that's questions 61 to 75. Each structure that's presented in this section is going to be paired with a couple different problems. It'll usually be at least two, but sometimes as many as four questions paired with one structure. In cube counting problems, of course, you're always going to be presented with a structure made of stacked cubes. And you're supposed to imagine that the outside of the structure is painted. And you have to figure out how many cubes have a certain number of their sides painted. Specifically, this could be one, two, three, four, or a maximum of five exposed sides. Now, please don't get too hung up on this concept of the sides being painted. It's exactly the same as asking how many sides a certain cube has exposed like exposed to the air as opposed to covered by another cube or the surface it's sitting on. In fact, you could get the wording, how many cubes have X number of sides exposed on your exam. They may not even use the word painted. So on cube counting problems, your goal is always the same to determine how many cubes have a certain number of sides or faces exposed to the air, exposed to the outside. Let's look closer at what this means. Well, according to the rules of the cube counting problems, the faces at the bottom of the structure don't count. Because you're supposed to assume that the entire structure is sitting on a surface, so those bottom cubes are against the ground and therefore covered up. Similarly, you also don't include any sides that are covered up by another cube, like these sides that are between these cubes. You do, however, include hidden sides that you can't see visibly with your eyes, but nonetheless are exposed to the air, like these here on the right, or these in the back. So for example, for a cube like this, the bottom face that's sitting on the ground doesn't count, and the side that's connected to this cube also doesn't count. So this cube has one, two, three sides that we can see from this perspective, plus one hidden side that must be exposed because of this opening here in the structure. So in total, the cube has four exposed sides. So now, say the problem had asked us how many cubes in the structure have four sides exposed. There are five such cubes in this structure that have four sides that are exposed. So five would be our answer. Now, let's take a step back and talk a little bit about how best to analyze these structures since we can only see them from one perspective. The only hidden cubes that we're going to come across are the ones required to support other cubes in the structure. For instance, you know that there's an invisible cube here because it is needed to support the cube that's above it. Of course, the structure is way too simple to show up on your actual exam, so let's look at something a little more complicated. This structure has four rows and four different levels. And you can't see this entire column, or this entire column, or even the bottom cube in this column. But you must assume that the cubes needed to support those columns are present. So that would mean that you have two hidden cubes here, as well as two hidden cubes here, and one here. And then you can also see a level two cube sticking out here at the back. So you must assume that there's a cube underneath supporting it. That means that the back of this structure would show all six of these cubes, as we could see if we could turn it around like this. Notice that just because we have this little column that juts out, it doesn't mean that we assume any other columns are jutting out at the back of the structure here. We do not assume symmetry in cube counting problems, nor do we assume the existence of any hidden cubes that are needed to support cubes that we can see. There is one odd little exception to this rule that the DIT has introduced to cube counting problems. And you may or may not see a structure like this on your exam, but we wanted to bring it up just in case. Say you have a structure that looks like this. Now it has something known as a floating cube. That means that unlike other cubes, it has an exposed side on the bottom. So this cube would have a total of one, two, three, four, five, exposed sides. It has no supporting cubes underneath it, but the presence of a floating cube 
does not change how we analyze other parts of the structure. We still assume, for instance, that this cube on the back has a supporting cube underneath it. We don't assume that just because there is a floating cube that we can see, that there will also be a floating cube somewhere else that we can't see. We only consider cubes to be floating if we can actually see that they are. So you just want to keep it in mind. And notice that floating cubes can also appear in the tops of tunnels like this, where again, their presence doesn't really change anything, except for the fact that there is an exposed side on the bottom of the cube. Okay, let's do one example problem, although we will be going in depth on some strategies for cube counting problems in general in the next video. In this problem, we're given a moderately complex structure and we're asked how many cubes have one of its sides exposed. The structure is a little bit hard to interpret because of the way that it's turned. So first let's look at how many rows of cubes there are going from front to back. That way we'll know better how different things in this structure align with one another. We have one, two, three, four rows. And just note that this cube sits to the left of these cubes and not these. And then of course we have four levels of cubes. One, two, three, four. So let's just go through the structure and account for each cube and how many sides it has exposed. We'll make a tally then of how many of these cubes have one side exposed. It can be also good to quickly note the hidden cubes in the structure. Both of these columns have hidden cubes, as you can see a little bit better if we turn the structure like this. And there's also one hidden cube in the center of the structure under this cube. Let's go from right to left in the back row. In this column, we have a cube that has many sides exposed and another cube that also has sides that wrap around the structure. In the next column, we have these two visible cubes and then we have cubes that must be sitting underneath these at level two and level one. This level two cube would have an exposed side in the front and in the back of the structure as we can see when it's turned around. So that would be two sides exposed. But the level one cube has this cube sitting in front of it, but still must have an exposed side at the back of the structure. So that is a cube with only one side exposed, as we could see here if we could fully turn the structure around. Continuing along, we have another two supporting cubes. These are both covered up in the front and sides but must also have an exposed side on that back wall. So we can add another two cubes to our count. Then in this column, we have more cubes with more than one exposed side. Notice that this bottom cube would have two exposed sides that wrap around the structure. In the next row, we can see that all the visible cubes have more than one side exposed. There's also a cube in the center of the structure here but it has no sides exposed. It's completely covered by other cubes. So now in this row, we see this cube that clearly has more than one exposed side. And then we see an exposed side here, but we know that there must be an exposed side over here. And then of course in the front, both of these columns consist of cubes with more than one exposed side. Notice again for this bottom cube that there must be one more side that's hidden on the left. So we have a total of three cubes with one exposed side and they're all here at the back of the structure. So that means C is our answer. And we can always study the structure in our explanations on our website if we interpreted something wrong. Here's a summary of our introduction to cube counting problems. The goal of cube counting problems is to determine how many cubes have a certain number of their sides exposed. Faces on the bottom of the structure do not count, as you can imagine the structure sitting on a surface or the ground. Always assume that hidden supporting cubes sit under the cubes that you can see, when you can't see a full column of cubes. The only exception of cubes not being supported from below is floating cubes, but only assume these are present if you can clearly see them from the perspective given. 
Make sure to know how many levels and layers of cubes there are in order to account for all the cubes. In problems, try to go through the structure in an orderly way to assess the cubes. Make sure that you're counting for every cube in the structure, including hidden cubes. It's best to move through the structure in an order that makes sense to you. Whether that be starting from the back and moving to the front, or vice versa, or moving from side to side, or even moving in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction following the shape of the structure. When you're practicing, take time to study the explanations and make sure that you really understand the structures that you get wrong. And you can learn more strategies on how to approach cube counting problems in our other cube counting videos. See you there.